Green tea with spice pear. Let's do a podcast. Hello and welcome to In The Pocket, the bass guitar podcast. Podcast? Oh my goodness, it's off to a good start. The bass guitar podcast where we get the low down on the low end. My name's Johnny, a totally average bass player, and each week I'm joined by a different co-host to talk all about that bass. Now, you know, normally with, you know, professional podcasts, if they mess up in the intro, it's like, ha ha ha, laugh, 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 bounce off someone else, ha ha ha. You know, we've been doing this for so long, you would have thought I got it by now. Ha ha ha. Um, This isn't a professional (laughs) podcast. (laughs) It's just just me doing it for a laugh. Um, So, yeah, whoops, sorry. No no professionalism from here. And uh, I'll concentrate to my intro. It's just me this week. Just me, baby. Solo Johnny. That's all that's all uh, all anybody ever wants, right? Yeah, sure. Let me know. <laughs> no, I'm sure it's not. Um I love bouncing off another person, but sometimes, you know, sometimes we gotta just strip it back and uh, and just have a chat, you know, just just me with myself. It's quite therapeutic, I find. So if any of you are new to this channel or new to this podcast, what we like to do is take three questions from the audience, two or just answer as normal questions. One I treat as the big base debate, which is kind of the topic for the week. We take a look at some news and we listen to a tone that's either been brought along by myself or by our guest. So without further ado, let's uh, jump into our first question. So this question comes from Samuel Smith on YouTube, who has asked, if your bands were to go on tour this summer, what bass or basses would you take and why? Now, I when I put up my poll on YouTube about, you know, asking questions, I put up a picture of my guitar rack. Uh, and on that guitar rack was my Made in Japan uh, Ibanez Roadstar, a GNL L2000. Oh gosh, I'm, I'm forgetting all the names. A Gretsch Electromatic G2. Two, two, zero. I can't remember how many twos it's got. The Junior Jet, the short scale. Uh, the uh, Red Squire Jazz Bass. And my new uh, Fuji Gen J Standard. Gosh, wow, that was really hard, wasn't it? Bloody hell. Um, so I'm kind of going to choose out of those and throw a curveball in there. Now, if you're watching, if you know my channel, you'll know that I love a P-Bass and I currently don't have any P-Basses in my collection. I know, shock horror, what's going on? Um, but honestly, for my band, Nova Mora, uh, which every single video of mine has their mu- their music, our music uh, in the background, it's, it's my band, um, which, you know, we're not that active. We don't do that much stuff. But, you know, I love those guys. And we just have such a good time when we're all together. Um, and so if we were to go on tour this summer, what base and bases would I take? Now, the band itself is kind of elements of post-hardcore in there, but not really the heavy elements. Um, mixed in with just some rock and some elements of little funk as well in places with the some funky guitar riffs and, and the old funky bass line as well. So um, there's actually slap in one of the songs and it's a, and it's a, you know, rock band. So pretty cool. If you ask me anyway, uh, I'll leave the links in the description so you can go and check it out. But to record, I've always used humbuckers uh, on all of our recordings. I use my music man, my Sterling um, Ray 24 CA on the last recording. And Oh, it, it just suits the sound so well. Um, but I don't have a Stingray anymore. Um, but the other bass that suits that band is a jazz bass. Now, I said about having P basses, and that's a shock. But for this band, I don't think I'd really use a P bass. It's Some of the lines are quite fast. I need a bit of a slimmer neck, I think. That's not to say I couldn't do it on a P bass neck. You know, who do you think I am? But 
I feel, I just feel it's more, it's smoother. It just feels right on a Stingray or a jazz bass. And those kind of um, more high-end dominating uh, tones uh, just really suits with this band. So I would have to say, of the ones I've got now, I'd say the FGN um, or the Squire, the jazz basses, because that's just in the right realm. But what I would, what I would want is to maybe get a stingray another stingray that's my plan for 2022 i definitely want to get a stingray to keep in my collection uh, and i want it to be i want it to be something new that sterling brings out but limiting my choices for this answer i would say the ray 34 from sterling so the like thousand pound sterling the one with the roasted maple neck Arrgh! yes I'm all in. Maybe the the black ash one. Yeah, that's that's where I'm at. That I would love that bass. Uh, so that's all probably my Fuji Gen jazz bass. Lovely. I hope that answered that question. And uh, hell, it said basses, so why not both? <laughs> Let's move on to the next segment. So, welcome to this week's bass news. This is where we get all the latest low. This is where we get the low down on the low end. I said it at the start, and here we are. God, so many callbacks, so much correlation, so fantastic. You know, I really do amaze myself. Um, so news for this week has been interesting, and some bits that aren't really news or not base related, but I thought they're worth mentioning. First off, court. Oh my God, they are. They're teasing me. Honestly, they are being little teases. So I saw a picture on their website when I was just looking for like, looking at brands and also just looking at what some are doing now that I hadn't checked out for a while. Oh my goodness. Courts have put up a segment on their website for new for 2022. Read more. It says faces. And I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. So I clicked it. And it's like a dummy article. It just says, updates coming in March. March. But there's a picture on there of like a tease of some of the bases. We've got a four and a five string pictured. And oh, stop what you're doing. Pause this. Go to their website. Because oh my God. I've never, I've never seen a more mad burly top in my life. I can only assume that this is like a really high end base for courts. I can see that we've got... Uh, it's like jazz jazz basses with uh, it's like Nordstrand pick Nordstrand pickups and Babix bridges. Now Courts obviously construct a lot of bases for other companies, um, and for them to be using parts like this, I think it's a you know a sign that this is going to be a high end instrument from them. You can see it's got a massive preamp preamp. Oh my god, it's late, okay. You can see there's a massive preamp on there. You know, these are going to be tone monsters, I can tell. And I really want one, even just from this, like, dark overlaid picture. I'm obsessed. Like, that burl is insane. I'd love to try that five string. Oh, with those Nord strands. Oh. Anyway, this is this is quickly turning into an X-rated podcast. Let's, let's move on. I still, I don't know the name of these bases. Just go and check it out for yourself honestly. The next bit is one that was making the headlines, isn't specifically bass related, but could be in the future. And it's a weird one. Samsung, yep, yeah, you know them from famous for making phones to fridges. Now, branching out into guitars. Yep, yeah, you heard it. Uh, Samsung have made the Zam, Zamtar? Zam, the, sorry, the Zamstar not confusing at all uh is their new guitar it's a smart guitar in quotes so what this is you you can pair it with an app of course it's samsung uh and it's the fretboard glows with like fret markers or like where you're meant to put your fingers as like a tutoring uh, method which bravo like like that is that's really cool innovation that i think is awesome of course it's aimed at beginners and or well, it could go up, you know, it's not never too late to learn and keep learning things, of course. But I don't know what the shelf life of this kind of thing is like if you get one 
or whether you can play it through a prop properly through an amp or what the durability of all that is i don't know it seems like it's very concept conceptual at the moment but yeah samsung the zamstar here they here they go they're, they're doing it we're entering the the electric guitar world uh we're gonna get electronic guitars soon uh, so yeah really really strange but i'm kind of excited <laughs> i quite like it um, I don't want them to come in and monopolize, um, but, you know, innovation is good. Com competition is good. So, yeah, let's, I'm interested. I hope they do a bass. That would be cool. That would be really cool. I feel like they'd be a little far off from doing a bass, like, years away, but here's hoping, hey? That would be pretty cool. And the last bit of news for this week is, you know, some hopeful news. It's personal news for me. Because this is the week that uh, my sires are finally meant to be arriving. So, for those that don't know all about this, uh, I've had the sire P5 and D5 on pre-order since February 2021. And yeah, they keep getting pushed back, delayed because of the pandemic. And just the world of the big boat getting stuck, you know. All of this stuff has just pushed it back in the world of manufacturing and uh, shipping and logistics is is up in the air at the minute. So, you know, I never blame Zaya for any of this, seriously. But I had emails back from Anderton's last time it got delayed saying that it was expected in their warehouse on the 26th of January. And they haven't emailed me to say otherwise. And normally they do like months in advance. So here's I touch wood. Touch wood, you know, I'm hopeful it might happen soon. <laughs> Brace yourselves, there's lots of Sire content coming. Uh, for those that don't know, the Sire P5 and D5 are their new passive offerings. p base, two p bases, one traditional kind of p base, uh, and the other, like a 50s style p base. Both roasted maple necks, rolled fingerboards. I'm so excited, so excited. And uh, yeah, I don't have any room in my house. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to sell some stuff, I guess. Um, but yeah, watch this space, hit that subscribe button and uh, stay tuned for Sire content coming hopefully very soon. Well, that about wraps it up for the news. Let's move on to our next question. <laughs> Okay, this question comes in from username Toad, Toad, Toad Alley. I don't know if it's Toad Alley or Toadly. Um, I like the second way. Uh, I like the second way that I said it personally. Um, and they say, favorite amp? This is a big question. Favorite amp? Like, I was like saying, what's your favorite bass? You know. It, it changes, man. It changes. These things, you can't just stay the same all the time. Some people do, and that's great. But I'm I, my opinions and tastes change like the wind. Um, but more so with basses, less so with amps, because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not as passionate about amps as I am. Like, it goes basses, then pedals, then amps for me. Uh, and I rarely change up my amp setup just because it's expensive and I use it a lot less than everything else. Anyway, anyway, favorite amp. So for context, I currently own my live setup is a full Fender Rumble rig. So Rumble 410 and the Rumble 500 head and plenty of volume, uh, plenty of low end. It's it's a really good and pretty affordable uh, setup. So I, and I really like that about it, you know, that I can kind of boff it around a bit. And like, if it, if anything goes bad, then I know it's not gonna be too much to replace or, you know, they're pretty, there's quite a lot of them on the second hand market and things like that. So, you know, I, I really love that amp. It's really, really good. And I always stand by that, but it's not my favorite. It's not my favorite amp. I have, amps in different sections because I have amps that I've tried and amps that I just know I like so it's quite difficult for me to pick out a favorite um, in terms of ones that I know I like but haven't necessarily tried or haven't tried in a long time 
Um, the orange AD200 always used to be a favorite of mine. Really distinct uh, bass tone out of that amp, but my God, it is beastly. Um, I owned the orange uh, bass Terra, which, you know, wasn't quite the same as the full valve, but still really cool. The same, you know, I, I tried to emulate getting the AD200 by having the bass Terra. I've done exactly the same with my current amp setup because my most recent, like, pined for amp is the Fender Bassman. Like, that that sound, oh, is so, that warm, tuby sound with a P bass, oh my god, it sounds so good. And so that's why I decided to go down the rumble route. I was like, oh yeah, I might save up one of these amps. Wait, how much are they? <laughs> good one. Considering that I don't use my amp all that much and I'm not really gigging that much anymore, I kind of feel like I can't justify a big expensive amp like that. So I, I settled for the rumble and, you know, I haven't been unhappy. But favourite amp is one that I've probably played. And I'm going to extend this question a little bit because I'm going to talk about my favourite amp setup that I've ever had at a gig. And it was all by mistake. I spoke about the orange... AD, uh, AD? No, the orange bass terror that I, that I owned. And one night I was at a gig and my head broke. Uh, one of the valves went. And so it there was no output from it. And I was like, huh, what am I going to do? Okay. Because uh, we were providing the backline for this event. So I was like, right, event. Who am I? <laughs> the gig. Um, and so one of the supporting bands was like, hey, it's cool. Do you want to borrow my head? And I was like, oh, thank you so much. And so he whacked up on top of my Ampeg SVT 610 cab that I had at the time. So like not quite the big 810 fridge. He whacked up there a Galleon Kruger RB450. Was it a 450? I think so. The RB series anyway. Oh my God goodness I, I i i've not had that moment with an amp since that it's just like blown my head off it was so punchy and clarity for days all solid state and affordable you know it's not that expensive if anything nowadays they're harder to get hold of but man i i had it paired up with my Schecter model t which is a pj base Going into my trusty Sans amp at the time, then into that setup. Oh my God, I was in heaven, honestly. Absolutely loved it. And, you know, you could say, well, you know, the cab and that preamp had a lot to play. But in sound check leading up to it, when I was using my my little lunchbox head, which was still 500 watts. But, you know, I didn't have that reaction. But that head blew my head off, you know, my actual head. So... I have not had an experience like that since. And so I always hold that amp in such high regard. So I have to say it's my favorite amp. Um, I just realized the question is amp and not head. But I, the circles that I kind of often run in, it's very much you have head and cab because the gigs you're going to, you're playing original sets with like three or four bands on the roster. So you can't be all lugging around your massive combos you've got to be able to just, yep, yeah, they're providing a backline. Okay, I can just put my head on top. You know, that's always been the kind of setup that I've run with. So yeah, that Galleon Kruger RB series is probably one of my favorite apps. Let's move on to the next section. <laughs> Welcome to That Tone You Own. This is where I ask our guests to bring along a tone of theirs that they would consider their signature sound or something that they are just enjoying at the time. Now, as the special guest is me this week, I'm going to go with the latter, something that I am really enjoying discovering at the minute. Um, and I had a few questions recently about synth pedals. Uh, and I realized that I just have no... I'm a rock guy playing with a pick. I have no experience with synth pedals. Like, I've never owned one. But I do own the Line 6 HX Stomp. And 
I've been really inspired recently uh, by players like uh, Ian Martin Allen's Alice, but by Ian Martin Allison uh, over at Scott's Bass Lessons, you know, and his and his Instagram page, just talking about uh, synth lines and using all these amazing effects on on the HX Stomp. Uh, and then I've also been really inspired by a uh, friend of the show, uh, Danny Higgins, who was actually the first guest on the show. He does some awesome, awesome synth bass stuff. Both of those players are expert wielders of the Line 6 HX Stomp. And so I'm going to take a leaf out of their book and try out some more synth stuff. And I thought I'd just put together a patch purely for this video. And I've gone down a rabbit hole and I'm really enjoying it. Um, so I'm going to play a little bit and talk you through my process, what I've made, what I've done, what bass and music, etc. But let's have a little listen, shall we? It's a bit of fun, isn't it? Um, so let's break this down here. This is a really fuzzy, uh, thick, low-end tone, I think, the, the synth tone that, you know, just, just really works, and I am loving it. Um, so I'm going to play around with the stomp at the minute. I'll just show you the layers I've got here. This is using the Gretsch Electromatic uh, Junior Jet, the short scale. I'm using both pickups uh, with tone full on. Uh, none of that really matters because you can't really hear much of the bass. But um, yeah, it's it's super smooth sounding. It's got really dead strings on at the minute, which I prefer this bass with new strings, but it's got a vibe, you know. Um, and that's going into the Aguilar uh, 51, uh, the Ampeg 8x10. So kind of like a tone hammer through an Ampeg SVT fridge. So that's what it sounds like. Clean. Uh, then what I've done here to get this disgusting, disgusting sound. I've gone through the synth patches that we've got in here and I've edited one uh, of the Growler. I don't know what this is based on, but this is what it sounds like with uh, the synth on there. It's almost got like a aliens going to Mars kind of vibe uh, with the, uh, the kind of, uh, of modulation that you're getting on the end. Reminds me of like an 80s sci-fi movie or something. I think that's a bit boring. It's not it's not punching through enough, it's not giving me enough grit. So I have paired it up with the Thrifter Fuzz pedal. And I've got this one on a separate channel, so you're not losing any low end from engaging the fuzz. Um, which is an amazing thing you could do with the HX Stomp. So let's listen to just that by itself without the uh, synthesizer on there. It's pretty disgusting sounding, but it's it's not really, it's got some high end, but it's not really loads of clarity. And that's probably from the dead strings of the bass. But I could just hear that that is dying for a bit of synth on there. I think it sounds great with short played notes, with long notes.
and and just the combination of them all i think it's a really cool sounding solid synth sound synth sound that can cover kind of all bases pun intended <laughs> just gets dirty and filthy and i am enjoying it that's my first ever synth sounder put together let me know what you think in the comments down below or reach out on instagram how can we make this better what else do you want to hear i'm loving this new journey let's move on So now we have arrived, it's gone quick, hasn't it? It's gone really quick. Now we have arrived to the big bass debate. So this is where I take a question and just talk about it a bit more and kind of make it the topic of the week or the title of this episode. And you all know, you already know what it is by the title. So this one comes in on Instagram at Johnny Dibble. That's where you can submit your questions uh, from username Source Creates, uh, who has asked, why are pick players frowned upon? so much <sighs> yep this is this is the bane of my life uh for those that know me i am predominantly a pick player um and i dig in hard and i love that kind of almost like a scooped mid uh sans ampy kind of tone really you know c compressed low ends not lots of highs and aggressive punching through a mix i love that sound i also love the sound of slap and i love the sound of uh you know finger style and even with flats you know i i tend to love all kind of sounds of bass uh but pick playing is where it all started for me and what i kind of what i'm best at i think i think i'm better at picking than i am at fingering <sighs> honestly um and it's just come back to haunt me and slapping <laughs> um you know i think picking is probably my forte if you like and i'm still not very good at it but it's my most enjoyable it's what i love doing live and yeah it's just the style that i resonate with the most so why are pick players frowned upon so much mate they hate us because they ain't us no i'm pretty sure that's not it um they i think the main problem here is from people being too traditionalist and being like, oh, well, you're not meant to play it with a pick. You're originally meant to do it with your fingers. So why, why would you do it with a pick? You know, that you can get this smooth, nice, dead sound from doing it with your fingers and with flats. You know, why on earth would you want this clangy, aggressive sound? And honestly, it is, it, it's a totally different expression of sound. Like, you know, imagine punk music played, like, softly with fingers or with flats, you know, something like that. It just doesn't work. And there's probably artists out there where it really does work, but they've kind of carved out their own sound. And pick playing is just so synonymous with um, with punk and rock and having this aggressive low end that is holding it down whilst punching through everything. And it's just iconic. And why, why are they frowned upon so much? Honestly, I, d I couldn't give you a definite answer because there's no right answer because there shouldn't be <laughs> no form of playing should be frowned upon unless you're playing with your feet maybe so i think mainly it just comes from a conflict in taste and uh you know a lacking ability uh to accept it and be like that's not for me but that's okay you know at the start of the year fretlesses were not for me at the start of the year start of last year fretlesses were not for me but i still accept that and be like but you know they're cool in their own right now they're for me <laughs> and i really want one <laughs> but which is something i never thought i'd say but you know tastes always change it's always people in the comments that are like oh don't can't play with a pick why would you do that it's the worst well there's certain rhythms and sounds you can get when playing with a pick that you just cannot get when playing with fingers. Certain 
all downstrokes or a certain rhythm that you're doing with the guitars that just work so much better uh, with a pick. Vice versa with fingers. There are things you can do with fingers that do not sound right with a pick or are more difficult to do. They're not the same and like playing the same thing on both can be wildly different, not just in sound, but in feel as well, because the, the different techniques that you would use uh, when using a pick or when using fingers. The articulation that you can get when using a pick, I would say is a lot higher, generally speaking. You know, there's people out there that can do amazing thing with their, things with their fingers. Uh, I don't, I'm sure there's an innuendo in there. I'm not going to be the one to bring it up, but I'm the only one talking right now. So I already have. Great. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, the articulation. So let's take like uh, metal and like, you know, lots of heavy breakdowns. To be syncopate, syn syncom? to be syncopated with a kick so much in like a breakdown, it's a lot easier to do that with a pick rather than uh, with fingers. And again, as well as the rhythm, you just get this higher, more aggression, almost like a piano sound when you're playing with a pick that way. Uh, and it's just a, a total, totally different sound that I, I just don't think you can compare the two. And you, there's, there's nobody that could ever justify to me why they should be frowned upon or why you should not play with a pick because they're, you know, there's no right or wrong answers in music really when it comes to creativity. And you just can't put up a barrier like that because of your closed mindedness. So why are pick players frowned upon so much? Closed mindedness. <sighs> I'm sure after this podcast, there's so much more that I'll remember to say about why like playing with a pick and, and sticking up for it because I just think that it's something I'm quite passionate about and something that you should never you know piss on someone's parade if they're having a good time or something especially if they're getting into something that's where the aggression really needs to stop is when somebody is getting into something and is starting to enjoy it and then somebody comes along and says no you shouldn't do it like this like come on man like let them be and let them do what they enjoy because there are so many barriers to learning an instrument and things that get in the way you know aside from creativity at uh, time and financial reasons and things like this you know don't let your shitty opinion be one of those barriers to somebody creating something great and really finding themselves in music so oh my god this got really deep all of a sudden so uh <laughs> let's uh let's finish it there shall we i just like to say a massive thank you to everybody for you know for liking the videos for giving me feedback for sharing this episode on social media share it with your bass playing friends uh i'd love to grow this community and get even more guests on here as well let's share the love uh once again thank you so much for listening see you next time